And good morning. Uh, my name is Chris Tromauer with the County Exec's Office. We're going to get started in just a second with our weekly press conference. Uh, today, we're going to hear from County Executive Pittman and then Health Officer Dr. Kalyan Araman, and then we will get to media Q&A. Uh, so with that, I'll turn it over to County Executive Stuart Pittman. All right. Thank you, Chris. Um, so the, uh, the case rate uh, for COVID is holding steady. Um, we are at a case rate of 15.6. Um, I don't know that I would call it good news. I don't think I actually would. Um, we're no longer at the top. We were two weeks ago, number one in the state, and we've gradually been dropping in rank for case rate. Um, so there are now six counties with higher case rates than us in Maryland. Um, our infection rate is 1.02. We need to get it below one uh, to be able to have a declining number of cases. So. Uh, we're ranked eighth in the state there. And then our positivity rate at 4.6% puts us 15th out of the out of the 24 counties in the city of Baltimore and Maryland. The, uh, the restrictions being lifted, um, as you know, Anne Arundel County um, has, has basically allowed the governor's um, capacity limit removal to take effect in our county, um, mostly affects retail and restaurants. Um, my own opinion has been that it's, it's not going to actually affect the amount of business taking place in those establishments much because it's pretty rare for um, a retail or a restaurant to get above 50% of fire code capacity. However, St. Patrick's Day is tomorrow and uh, we're going to have to be really careful. Uh, it's uh, the, the distancing limits are still in effect. People are not supposed to be standing at bars drinking with their masks off. And if people do see that happening, please call our COVID hotline forum line and, and report it um, so that we can do enforcement. That's 410-222-7256. The, um, uh, on vaccinations, <clears throat> the things are going well. Um, the, the, the new change at the state level where people can no longer share their registration links um, has made life better at our vaccination sites. So very few people are being turned away um, for showing up um, being ineligible. Uh, so that's very good news. Um, some folks are missing their emails that come from the state when they register from prep mod, partly because of the name that it comes from. It sometimes goes into spam. So no reply at multi-state p4p.com is where it's coming from and and people are missing that in some cases so um, please watch for your emails if you're registering um, the we have a step-by-step -step video about the registration process if you register through the county at uh, aacounty.org slash coronavirus you can find that and and that's very helpful for some folks uh, to get through the process the community vaccination clinics are becoming uh, so popular that some of the churches and organizations that are running them are now telling us that they could handle all 3,400 doses each week. Uh, please give us more, please give us more. Uh, they're, they're popular and they're helping particularly for us to reach the communities that have been the hardest to reach and are the most vulnerable to COVID. So that's gonna continue to grow. And um, we're thrilled that now through our aacounties.org uh, slash COVID vax pre-registration system. We are now getting people in the 65 to 75 age category appointments. Um, so we've had 4,000 new registrations this week to that, I think in part because um, we've opened it up to those folks. Um, but really the great news is that 110,000 of our county residents um, have been vaccinated with at least first doses. That's 19% of the county population. So it feels like we are getting there. Um, and we are very, very ready for a significant increase in the availability of doses. Um, we have the capacity and we'll be able to get that done as soon as we have the doses. Um, Thursday is the one year anniversary of county buildings closing due to COVID. Um, we have a, an employee town hall tomorrow um, where we're going to talk about that experience and, and um, uh, with employees and where we go from here. 
Um, and I want to really encourage people to look at a report that we did looking back over the year of all the county programs that uh, have been implemented and numbers behind them. Um, it's a four page nice report that you can find at aacounty.org on the home page. And, and it really does tell a story of um, real creativity among county public servants and, and uh, every program in there had, had a group of people behind it that, that made it happen. So as always, I wanna thank our staff for the great work that they've done. Um, still much left to do. Last night, the county council met and uh, did a number of things that I was very pleased to see. One is that we're one step closer to uh, the first community center in Anne Arundel County in a, a very, very long time, the Severn Intergenerational Center. Uh, the, uh, the council approved um, and the school board has approved the application to the state to transfer that land to the county so that we can get going on that $14 million project um, for that community. Plan 2040, our land use plan, general development plan is working its way through the process the way it should. There were some good amendments introduced last night at the council meeting. It'll be back before the council on April 5th. And I do get a lot of emails and I, I read a lot of comments about the plan. And, and um, while not everybody agrees with everything, I, I've found that most of the things people are asking for in the plan are there. They're just hard to find. They're in the implementation section usually. Uh, but uh, there are good changes that are being made to that. Um, the bill that was um, amended last night that, that I feel the strongest about was the tree protection bill. Uh, Councilwoman Rod Vance, Bill 2021, you probably read about it on the front page of the Capitol this morning. And, and I just have to say that this is something that um, I have um, been waiting to do for quite some time. Um, I, like many, um, have been very frustrated by the history in this county of developers who go in and they take down the trees before they file their applications so that they will get nothing more than a slap on the wrist. The most recent situation with the, the Hogan subsidiary behind Annapolis Town Center was only one, the probably notorious uh, Turtle Run uh, development, Charlie Snyder, the developer who completely cleared the site before applying and then was um, brought by a previous county executive to, to uh, prosecution before the um, attorney general and then, um, and then ended up being given a large sum of money from our tree forestation fund um, to pay for his, his losses and buy his land at an inflated price was probably the most notorious example. Um, there was also the Hogan subsidiary Better World, World Builders up in St. Margaret's um, that, that cleared land in advance of their application. And we can't allow that, that, to, that to happen in our county anymore. Um, and this bill is gonna help um, so that we can actually find these developers when they try to do that. I wanna welcome our new auditor, Michelle Bolayer. Look forward to a constructive relationship, um, making sure that taxpayers' funds are being well spent. Uh, and then today, I just wanna to note that the Senate is likely to pass Anne Arundel County's Housing Trust Fund Bill, uh, Senate Bill 566. So we're looking forward to that, uh, to address some of the housing needs in our county. Uh, tonight, <clears throat> we have our uh, um, Tuesday night with the county executive and the topic is jobs. Um, as we are looking forward to rebuilding uh, and getting people back to work who've been unemployed during this pandemic, we've got Kirkland Murray, uh, from Anne Arundel Workforce Development Corporation, as well as the board chair of that organization, Walt Townsend, and uh, Nancy Maishko from Live Casino and Hotel, major county employer, and Julie McGovern from Luminous Anne Arundel Medical Center, talking about job opportunities in the county and, and how we are going to be able to um, link residents to the jobs that we have in our county um, through Workforce Development's uh, <coughs> strategic plan that they've just put forth. Um, and finally, I want to say, um, um, express my condolences to the family of former County Executive Bob Paschal, um, our County Executive for two terms from 74 to 82. Um, county flags will be flown at half mass starting tomorrow for the next three days. So um, thank you. And over to you, uh, Dr. Kalyana Raman. And Mr. County Executive, can I just jump in for a second? And the, the flags are being lowered immediately. 
Um, so they okay. they will be lowered starting now. Um, just wanted to clarify that. And now, now it's all yours, Dr. Colleen Arnold. Thank you, County Executive. Um, we'll start with the data. Yes, our numbers are looking stable. We're seeing our case rate stay fairly stable, um, around 15. Um, I think you noted that our um, that the that our number 1.02 says that we're not growing. We're, we're not growing. We're not shrinking, um, and that's why it's really important. It, it's St. Patrick's Day. That's great. Have a beer, but um, remember, COVID's still with us. So please don't, please don't party too hard. Stay with your, stay in your bubbles still. Um, if you've been vaccinated, remember, not everybody has been. Good news is that over 30%, about 31% of people have gotten at least one dose. So 90% have gotten one dose, and 11% have completed their vaccination. So either gotten uh, both doses or the Johnson and Johnson. So we're making a lot of progress. Over 10% of the population per month, actually faster than that. Um, with the Biden administration talking about um, more vaccines coming out in April and May, it means we are well positioned. We've got excess capacity, not just the health department, but um, um, uh, primary care providers, urgent care, pharmacies, they've got more capacity so we can get more vaccine doses out. So keep, keep doing what we need to do with masking, distancing, avoiding gatherings, just for a couple months longer, right? And then we will really be in a very different place. Our hospitalizations continue to be flat, about 40 to 50 uh, total between. Um, it's, a, it's not really coming down anymore. It's, it's flattened out there. So we're keeping an eye on that one. Um, our percent positivity is less than 5%. Um, and our percent of population tested is 2.4%. So. Generally, we're seeing since since kind of the tail end of the surge about a month ago, we've seen a lot less testing, uh, and it is important for people to continue to get tested, in, particularly if they have symptoms, even if they've been vaccinated. Um, give me one second. So this week we did re receive the health department received uh, a little bit of a bump in doses. Typically, we've been getting 3,400 doses. We got 3,600 doses. Um, and we've split those evenly between the educators and um, and the 65 plus. As Kenny Dickett noted, we are we are now this week in phase 1C with the 65 to 74 year olds um, being included. We are not doing the occupations yet. We want to start here, and we want to work through all the educators who haven't gotten vaccinated yet. Um, and so we'll see how that's going. We also began our uh, vaccinating homebound individuals last week in partnership with Aging and Fire. Um, we're doing an intellectual uh, disability and developmental disability clinic this week in partnership with the ARC. Um, and then our community sites are going really well. We've had um, we had our first one a couple of weeks ago. We had three last week. We have three scheduled this week, um, and we're continuing to schedule those out. Um, each of those sites will be a hundred doses, and that's. Uh, that's outside of our pre-registration system, so we're having those community sites identify people to get vaccinated, and we're seeing the results. So in the county, about uh, four weeks ago, only 11% of the people getting vaccinated were Black. That's up to 15%, not quite where it needs to be, at 17%, um, but progress. Um, for the Department of Health specifically, we've, got, we, we've increased from 11% to 20% of people getting vaccinated being Black. So, these types of structural changes in terms of how we vaccinate will improve, will improve equity. Uh, it's not simply a matter of whether people want to or not get vaccinated or not. We also have to make it structurally easier for people to get vaccinated. Um, we are seeing that the numbers among Hispanics is lower, but part of that is because the average age of Hispanics is lower. A uh, good example is that in our 75 plus crowd, less than 1% of people are Hispanic who are 75 years or older in our county. Um, so of course our vaccination rate is gonna be lower amongst that crowd. Our goal is to get, um, is to work with the Hispanic community to get ready to get vaccinated so that as our categories expand, we're ready to go. And we're not, um, we're not waiting to figure out why it didn't happen. Um, we're looking forward to opening a site at Pitt Moyer in the city uh, starting next week. Um, details being finalized, we'll, we'll be starting with um, some city employees, and then that'll be a site for 
um, another site similar to Alula Scott uh, and, and O'Malley sites, another place for people to get vaccinated through our registration system. Um, that's it for now. I'm going to turn it back over to you, Chris. Great. Thank you, Nilesh. Um, so we're going to do questions from media now. And as uh, we usually do, if you would please uh, put your name in the chat or you can use the raise hand function in Zoom. Uh, we'll start it off with Danielle from the Capitol. Here's the first question. Hi, this is Danielle on Olivia's computer. Um, I am curious about testing. I've noticed that some of the testing sites weren't scheduled on the calendar this week. Um, is the county ramping down testing in order to ramp up vaccinations? Um, are you seeing less people interested in getting tested? So we are seeing a lot less interest. We've, interest, we've been talking about that. Um, and so we are pulling some of our testing staff to, to increase our community vaccination programs. Um, and we'll be looking at uh, testing capacity in the coming weeks. We're going to maintain some level of testing capacity, um, but as we see more vaccines, we will be shifting that staff over into vaccinations. Thank you. And we've got a question from John Frenet from my own Annapolis. This is for Dr. Kelly Narman. Um, Senator Elkrith sent out a a bulletin yesterday saying that less than 10% of people that have registered on the county's vaccine site have actually ended up getting a vaccine at the county. Has this created a, a huge scheduling issue for you? And are there any wasted vaccine shots? And do we know where they're going? So that's a lot of questions, John. Let me try to take them one at a time. Well, you, you, you do it when you can. You take it when you can. Um. I'll answer the easiest one first. There's no wastage. Um, that's that's number one. Number two, that's the reason we've actually switched to that sign up genius method of asking people when they're going to get um, when they want in a clinic and sending them a single uh, a single invite is to cut down on that appointment sharing and no shows. Some of our sites we're seeing up to twenty five percent no show slash turn away. Um, as you can imagine, that's a that's a really difficult problem to to handle while we're trying to vaccinate people and trying to stay within our categories. And so that's one thing that we've done, and we're starting to see this week that it's a it's a, it's a lot better to manage. The other is that there are other options for people to get vaccinated: um, pharmacies, hospitals, now the mass vac sites. And so we want people to get vaccinated wherever they can get in. Um, and so from our standpoint, as long as they got vaccinated, and that's why they are not getting vaccinated with, with the health department, that's great. Uh, and I think we're only going to see that. We're working with uh, Chris to try to clear out our pre-registration lists of all those folks who've already gotten vaccinated elsewhere. Um, we know that uh, we know that people are getting them elsewhere. That's great. I would just add that, that um we knew that they would be getting them elsewhere. We did not know who's going to be getting doses in the beginning. So it's been important to have all those people signed up in one site, but um, we know that they've signed up on other sites. In fact, the Luminous um, Anne Arundel Medical Center site reported having 140,000 in their pre-registration system. So we know they're largely the same people. And, and as the state gets their um, technology together, it's becoming, it will become more easy for us to identify which of the people on our list has already been vaccinated. Um, that's coming soon that they're going to be able to share with us what they have on their registration list. But it took a long time for the state to get up a pre-registration list and, and, um, and then it took a while for them to, to fix the problem of link sharing as well. Okay, thank you. Great. Those are the two questions we had. Uh, we'll do another last call for questions from the media. All right. It looks like we're all set. Happy Tuesday, everybody. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye.